Welcome to the course Atmosphere, Vegetation, Soil Interactions. In this clip, we will introduce you to the course. We will explain what the course is about and how the course is organized. The course is all about transport. Transport at the interface between soil, vegetation and the atmosphere. That's just the place where we live, where we work, we grow our food and where we have fun. The objective of the course is that you are able to describe both qualitatively and quantitatively how these processes work. Well, not just for the situation that you see here, but in principle for any type of service. In the end, the processes that we are dealing with are fundamentally the same here in the Netherlands as they are at any other place on earth. But what may differ are, for instance, the properties of the surface, or the properties of the soil or the vegetation, and the local climate to which the surface is exposed. Okay, which processes are we looking at? First, we need to understand the surface energy balance, as many of the processes of interest are ultimately driven by the radiation input at the surface. This causes heating of the soil, it heats up the air, and it causes the evaporation of water. This evaporation brings us to the other important quantity being exchanged at the surface, water. Apart from the evaporation that is driven by radiation and other processes, the availability of water from rainfall is another important driver. Above the ground, the rainfall interacts with vegetation and part of it is lost as a runoff. The soil receives water through infiltration, but it may also lose part of it by the uptake of water by plant roots. Coupled to the motion of water in the soil is the motion of solutes. Those solutes can, for instance, be pollutants, salts, but also plant nutrients. Apart from the transport of solutes through the motion of water, we also need to take into account dispersion and decomposition if we want to really understand the concentrations that occur. At the interface that we are considering, Plants play an important role as a major transport mechanism of water from the soil into the atmosphere. In order to better understand that role, we need to look at the way that plants grow. The uptake of CO2 through photosynthesis turns out to be closely coupled to the loss of water vapor through transpiration. And it's also strongly coupled to the amount of radiation. You see, in order to understand this place where atmosphere, plants and soil meet, we need to consider many processes in connection. That will be one of the challenges of this course. To keep track of what we are doing, we have made this sketch of the course. It contains all the ingredients. Radiation, heat transport in the soil, then there is turbulent transport, for instance, of heat and water vapor, but also momentum between the surface and the atmosphere. There is water transport in the soil, determined by rainfall, but also by the characteristics of the soil. There is transport of solutes in the soil. Processes in and around plants, both above ground and in the soil. And finally, we will connect all of these processes together. This course is not an isolated course in the Soil Water Atmosphere program. It builds on previous courses related to the interface of soil, water and atmosphere. After you finish this course, hopefully successfully, there are a number of bachelor courses that are a logical follow-up. First, there is field research, water and atmosphere in the second year. And in your third year, there are several restricted optional courses in which you can dive deeper into the subject. Also, your bachelor thesis is a good place to learn a lot more. Once you've finished your bachelor, the master program Earth and Environment has several advanced courses in which the processes at the soil, vegetation, atmosphere interface play an important role. Now it is time to give you some information about how the course is organized. The core of the course is the book Transport in the Atmosphere, Vegetation, Soil Continuum. With a few exceptions, the full contents of chapters 1 to 9 are part of this course. To support the course, we have made a course manual. And there you can find the course guide, additional exercises for the tutorials, two scientific papers related to the course, and the instructions for the PC practicals. 
In those practicals, we will use a numerical model that covers most of the processes that are discussed in this course. This is the soil, water, atmosphere and plant model or SWOP model. This version of the model has been specifically developed for this course. Finally, we use Brightspace to provide you with additional information and materials. The course consists of a mix of lectures, tutorials and PC practicals. Now we come to the point of assessment. Your final mark for the course will be based on three parts. The largest part is based on the final exam that you take in the exam week. And this is a closed book exam and it covers all chapters of the book. In addition, there are two midterm tests that each cover three chapters of the book. Those tests will be computer based and organized on campus. Finally, you will perform a small research project. The work starts in week four with a proposal while the main research is done in week six. The report you write on this project counts for 20% of your mark. So to conclude, we have discussed how this course couples the various transport processes that occur at the interface between atmosphere, vegetation and soil. Furthermore, we have shown you how this course is taught and how we determined your grade. This clip has certainly not covered all the details of the organization of this course, so please consult the course guide as well.